And welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to learn how to add up the voltages across each of the three components in an RCL circuit since we now know that they're going to be out of phase with one another. So how do we add up the voltages? Well, it turns out, notice the equation here, that the voltage across each of the three components is directly proportional to the reactance and the resistance of the three components because it's a multiplication of the RMS current times either the reactance or the resistance. So here we have a diagram that shows you the uh, inductive reactance, the capacitive reactance, the resistance, and then the total impedance of the circuit. And so it turns out that therefore the voltages across these three components can be found by projecting them onto the line represented by the impedance. So if we uh, make this line a little bit larger in both directions, because that line represents the phase of the voltage across the source, the voltage source. And you can see that in this case the current is 21 degrees ahead of the voltage across the source. Of course, since the phase diagram will rotate in a counterclockwise direction, notice that in a capacitor circuit, since the, re the capacitor reactance is larger than the inductor reactance, the whole circuit acts more like a capacitor circuit. And in a capacitor circuit, we can read that E like the Iceman, in a capacitor circuit, the current is ahead of the EMF or the voltage. And so we can see that right here. So what we're going to do now is project the three vectors that we have onto the line represented by the impedance of the circuit. So when we project the resistance across like this, or that means that, again, the length of these vectors can also represent the actual voltages across them. So we can say that this would be the voltage across the resistor, and we're going to project that onto the line represented by the impedance. This here can be representing uh, the voltage of the inductor, and we're going to project that one onto this line right here. And here we can represent this as the voltage across the capacitor, and we're going to project that onto the line set up by the impedance. Notice that the phase angle right here, this phase angle right here, which is phi, is the same as this phase angle right here, phi, and the same as this phase angle right there, phi. So there's the phase angles represented of that. And the projection of those vectors onto this line right here actually represents the voltage at that moment in time. Of course, remember, a phase diagram is a snapshot in time of what's happening in the circuit, which means that right here, this is representative of the voltage across the inductor at that moment in time. This right here represents the voltage across the capacitor at that moment in time. And this right here represents the voltage across the resistor at that moment in time. Now notice that this, since this is a phase diagram, these two values are positive because they're to the right. This value right here is negative because it's to the left. So we'll actually we'll have to subtract the voltage across the inductor because that means it's not a voltage drop across the inductor, but it's actual voltage rise. Depending upon what happens on the circuit, the inductor is always opposing a change. So the potential difference across the inductor sometimes is positive and sometimes is negative. Depends upon what the current is doing, how it's changing, what direction it's flowing and how it's changing. And the voltage across the capacitor can also be positive or negative depending upon which charges are on which side of the plate. Of course, the voltage across the resistor is always a drop, uh, again, if you go with the flow of the current, of course. And since the current is opposite in direction, sometimes the current flows in this direction, sometimes the current flows in that direction. Again, we have to account for that as well on the resistor. Okay, now let's find the three values. So the voltage across the resistor is equal to the voltage that we had when we use this equation right here, and I wrote the voltage down, it's 93.36 volts, so it's 93.3, oops, uh, 36 volts, and now we have to multiply that times, let's see here, it's a projection, this is the angle theta, this is the hypotenuse, so it's the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle, because it's the adjacent side, so it would be times the cosine of 21 degrees, and let's see here, if we do that, we have 93.36 volts, 93.36 volts times 21, take the cosine of that, and we get 87.16 volts. So 87.16 volts. So according to the phase that we're in at this moment, at that very moment in time, the voltage across the resistor is not the 93.36 volts. That's only when we take the 
maximum or the RMS current into account, this is at this moment in time, the voltage across the resistor will be 87.16 volts. All right, let's now do it for the capacitor. So the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the voltage we normally have, which is 123.82 volts. That's the RMS voltage times the, now we have to be careful here, notice that's the opposite side to the angle, so it's going to be the sine of 21 degrees. So the sine of 21 degrees, and let's see what we get for the momentary voltage across the capacitor at that moment in time. Remember, the voltage is going to change with time, so at that time, what is the voltage? So it's 123.82 times 21, take the sine of that, equals and we get 44.36 volts. So that's 44.36 volts. Okay, and then finally the voltage across the inductor is equal to the RMS voltage, which we found there to be 87.99 volts times, and again, it's the opposite side to the angle, so it would be the sine of 21 degrees, the sine of the phase angle, 21 degrees, and Ooh, but we got to be careful. It's going to be a negative value, isn't it? Because it's pointing to the left. So it's, we, had, we need to put a negative value there because we're going to get a negative direction. And my calculator right here. So we have 87.99 times 21. Take the sine of that equals. And it's a negative 31.53 volts. A negative 31.53 volts. All right. So those are the momentary voltages across the, across the circuit. Now, keep in mind that as this is rotating, right, this whole thing will rotate. Notice that the projection will be different as this whole thing rotates. It will be pointing in a different direction. But we can see now that this technique will work. If we add all those voltages together, let's see what we get. We have 87.16 plus 44.36 minus... 31.53 equals, and I get 99.99. That's a runoff error. So we know that when you add them all up together, we get 100 volts across all three components, which is equal to the voltage of the voltage source. So you can see that if you take the phases into account, the voltage across the three components do add up to the voltage of the voltage source. And all we have to do is project the voltages of the three components onto the impedance axis no matter what the direction no matter what the direction of that um, of that phaser is you will always get the same result they will always add up to 100 volts of course as this is rotating the voltage across the three components will continuously change of course since we have an oscillating voltage source and that's how we do that